Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. There are a huge number of awesome miniature making companies out there. I have bought from many of them and have always been blown away by their quality and especially their creativity. So in this video, I wanna show off the 10 best minis I found from around the web. Forty K is a wonderful world, but it has grown far faster than Games Workshop can supply us with the necessary plastic crack. Sure, if you want to play Primaris, you're taken care of, but what if you want to play an Imperial Guard regiment known as the Maccabi and Janissaries? Or what about the backwards Eldar Exodites who decided to shun technology? These and dozens of other obscure armies do not have the appropriate models from Games Workshop. But luckily for all of us, there is a huge community out there producing very 40k inspired models of whatever your heart desires. It's probably out there, somewhere, in the stars. This list is made up of companies I have bought from in the past and I will buy from in the future. And starting off this list is the Unforgiving Chaplain. I collect chaplains from my Black Templar Space Marine Army and I have almost finished acquiring every one Games Workshop has ever made. And I'm thinking about dabbling into alternative models. And on top of the I can't believe it's not Chaplin list is the Unforgiven Chaplin from Artel W. He is dripping with grim gothicness. He would make a fine addition to my collection. This model is sick, with almost enough skulls, 22 by my count, and with plenty of bones to go along, this guy would make an exceptional count as Chaplin model. I might have to add a squad of Primaris Reavers into my Space Marine army so that I can have this guy flanked by a whole squad of skull helmeted badasses. Number two, the Lady Inquisitor, Alba Snow. Artel W has many great Inquisitor models, but this one is my favorite. I might even like it more than Inquisitor Grey Fox. I love the suit of medieval armor look more than the steampunk Pilgrim, and the nod to Snow White with the apple. It's funny to think of Snow White ordering Exterminatus on a planet. Perhaps she ordered the extermination of the Squats to get rid of a certain seven dwarves. It also comes with the King of the Servo Skulls, and that's fun. Number three, Grox Morkatansky aka not Mad Max. It just so happens that I am in the process of building a 40k orc army based on the best movie ever made, Mad Max Fury Road. The heart-pounding adrenaline-fueled feature-length car chase from the man who brought us happy feet is so inspiring to me that I cannot help but want to recreate those dusty car battles on the tabletop. This model is 100% not Max Rokotansky, it's Mork Morkatansky. Completely different. I can't wait for this guy to join the ranks of my orcs and, for added fun, they give you the option to give him the Terminator lever action shotgun from T2, or a flaming orc skull head, because why the hell not? Number 4, Rogue Trader Captain, aka not the guy from Firefly. And it is not. This model shares no similarities between Nathan Fillion or Captain Malcolm from Firefly. This is simply a dashingly handsome inquisitor with a power sword and a las pistol. But if you want a good Inquisitor that has a fun, dusty, science fiction, adventure, short-lived TV show kind of aesthetic, look no further. He also comes with four last pistol arms, for dual wielding obviously, but with a bit of green stuff, he would make a wonderful and hilarious Gene Stealer Keller Morph. Number five, the Exo Lords Combat Squad. From Anvil Industries, if you like reasonable marines or iron hands, these should be your best friends. If you want 100% customizable space marines with laser sights and grenade launchers, look no further. Anvil Industries is a wonderful resource to look at if you love the look of high-tech weapons. I love the gothic aesthetic of space marines, but I have been known to stare longingly at all this tactical kit that would look right at home on some space marines. Maybe one day. If you thought that the call pattern Primaris armor was a soft reboot, perhaps you could use the Exolord armor and really bring your marines into the 42nd century. Number six, pin up Jungle Commissar. I don't know why, but it seems like the Katachan characters from Games Workshop just didn't hit that hard. The Warhammer store near me still has copies of the Katachan Colonel and Sergeant Ripper Jackson on shelves. Maybe if they had been as glorious as the Anvil Industries Jungle Commissar, they would have moved more copies. He looks fabulous, with his six pack on display and his biceps popping, and what could only be described as a gentlemanly bulge. This is the Jungle Commissar we need and the one we deserve. I would love to paint this guy up, and I think he would need a triple gloss coat to really bring out his hot, sweaty physique. What? It gets hot in the jungle. And in addition to fun lists like this, we make wargaming tutorials each and every week. And if you want more, the best way to support us is over on Patreon. Over there, you get to vote on what I paint live on YouTube, some behind the scenes, and other exclusive content. Number seven, Plaguelings. These guys are hilarious. They are a departure from the fat cherub style of nerglings that Games Workshop makes, 
but are somehow even more cute. I really hope Games Workshop brings Nurglings into Kill Team because I want to put these guys into my Plague Marine roster. They are horribly disfigured, but still capture that charm that Nurgle models carry. Also, Nurgling is a fantastic name, but Plaguelings might be even better. Number 8, the Copta Can. For me, this is the only way I can envision an Orc Def Copta now. Now that I have seen the Cromlech Orc Copta, a model that does away with just about everything that makes a helicopter a helicopter, I can't go back. I have seen perfection. What more could I want? This machine is the pinnacle of Orc tech, and it comes with everything that an Orc Def Copta can take. I always wondered how Def Coptas took buzz saws. I just assumed that the Orc driver had it, but the idea of a mechanical arm just haphazardly swinging off the side, completely ignoring all physics, I find outstanding. Number 9, the Necroborg General Grievous. AKA not General Grievous from Star Wars fame and also not a Necron Overlord. This guy is incredible. I don't know where they drew inspiration for this model, but it is absolutely inspired. This guy would look incredible flanked by some Necron Lich Guard with swords and boards. I don't know why, but I feel like this fella would have a wheezy cough and say General Kenobi a lot. I love when we see mashup stuff like this and when it is pulled off so perfectly, it creates a must buy model. Also, if you look at the Commissar he is perched on, you can see that he has been torn in half. And that's just fun. And finally, number 10, the greater good, Cyberbike. AKA, not Akira. I don't know what this model would be useful for in a Tau army, but a Tau on a sweet sci-fi bike? What is there not to love? This model is chock full of fun little details that make it so wonderful. The little hoof pedals, a slot in the back for a little drone, and the Tau biker badass with a hipster haircut. I don't have any interest in starting a Tau army, but I might need to buy this model. I have a small handful of Wargame exclusive models and they have always been flawless. I kind of love that they didn't feel the need to slap guns anywhere, but I would have liked an action pose riding Tau in addition to the badass we have here. And that concludes my list, and what a list it was! Although Games Workshop is the flagship that has given us the wild world of 40k, it's really fun to see what the community has come up with to supplement the catalog. And also, I have one honorable mention, and it is this. You're welcome. And those are 10 of the best not quite 40k minis I've seen around the web. I'm sure I missed a ton, so please let me know in the comments below what are some gems that you found. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.